Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a stunning parallax effect that brings depth and realism to your scenes. If you love cinematic landscape visuals, this video is made just for you. All right then, if you're ready, let's jump straight into the video. First, I'm going to pre-compose the mountain and wolf layers. This allows both layers to move together when I add camera motion later. So, I select both layers, go to the layer menu, choose Pre-Compose, and give it a proper name. Now, let's select all the layers and make them 3D. This will add depth to our scene and allow for more realistic camera movements. To organize the layers more precisely, I need to create a second active camera in my scene. To do this, I change the View 1 option next to the active camera to View 2. And that's how I create my second active camera. To organize the layers more neatly, I zoom out the camera slightly using the mouse wheel. Then, I align my scene from the bottom to get a clearer view and make layer arrangement easier. Now, to modify the position of the layers, I keep all of them selected. Then, I press P on the keyboard to open the position settings for every layer. Next, I arrange all the layers from back to front, spacing their position values appropriately. This step is crucial. If the layers aren't properly ordered, the camera movement won't produce the desired effect. After arranging all the layers properly, we can return to view one and disable the second camera view. Here, I select all the layers again and press S on the keyboard to reveal the scale settings for every layer. Now, I increase the scale values of all the layers from back to front, while keeping the position set to its original arrangement. This way, the positions remain the same, and only the layer sizes are enlarged. As a result, when we move the camera, a natural parallax effect is created in the scene. Now I notice that the dust layer looks a bit too strong in the scene. To fix this, I select the dust layer and press T on the keyboard to open the opacity settings. Then, I lower the opacity value slightly to make the dust effect softer and more natural. Now, let's add a realistic glow effect to the moon layer. To do this, we type Deep Glow in the Effects and Presets panel and apply the effect to the moon layer. This gives the moon a natural and striking glow. Now, we want the camels to enter the scene from outside. First, I select the camel layer and press P on the keyboard to open the position settings. I add a keyframe at the first frame, then move to the last frame and add a second keyframe. This keeps the camel's starting position, so they end up in the center of the scene. Finally, I go back to the first keyframe and move the camels outside the scene. This way, the camels naturally enter the scene from the outside. Here, I'm not satisfied with the position of the bird layer, so I move it slightly upward. This makes the scene look more balanced and visually appealing. To create camera movement, we need to add a camera to our scene. We do this by going to the Layer menu and selecting New Arrow Camera. I'll set the camera to 50 millimeters and leave the other settings as is. You can use different values if you like. Then, click OK to add the camera to the scene. I always use a different technique. Instead of using the camera's own transform settings, I control camera movements through a null object. To do this, I select the camera layer, right-click, and choose Camera, Create, Orbit, Null. This creates a null object linked to the camera, making camera movements much easier to manage. I always use this method, but you can also choose to animate the camera using its own transform settings if you prefer. The choice is yours. Now, to animate the camera's position, I select the null object and press P to open the position settings. I also want to add rotation to the camera. For this, I hold Shift and press R on the keyboard. This activates the rotation property while keeping the position values intact. Now, at the first frame of the scene, I add a keyframe for position and also add a keyframe for Z rotation to animate the camera's rotation. 
I plan to animate the camera movement over seven seconds. So I move the timeline to the seven second mark and add keyframes for both position and rotation again. I've explained before why I do this. It ensures the camera ends up exactly as desired. Finally, I go to the first frame of the scene and add a zoom in to the camera. This way, since we zoom in at the beginning, the camera will zoom out toward the end of the video and return to its starting position. Now, I use the moon as a reference and adjust the position to center the moon layer. Now, I set the Z rotation to 10 and rotate the camera. Also, to prevent the edges of the cloud layer from being cut off, I move the layer slightly upward. This completes the adjustment. Now, I move to the last frame. Earlier, when setting the rotation value, both the first and last keyframes were accidentally selected, so the same value was applied to both. No worries. We fix this by setting the last keyframe to zero, restoring the camera's rotation to its original state. To make the motion smoother, we select all keyframes and apply Easy Ease. This makes the camera movement look more natural and visually pleasing. Now we select the vector files and enable the gear icon in front of the layer to improve the visual quality of the vector layers. Since we pre-composed the mountain layer, we first double-click the pre-comp layer to open it and then apply the same process to the mountain layer itself. If we applied this directly to the pre-comp layer by selecting the pre-comp settings, the layer would disappear. That's why we follow the method we just used. The same applies to the moon layer. Since we've already applied the deep glow effect to it, applying this step to the moon layer would remove the glow. So we don't perform this step on the moon layer. Finally, to create a more realistic look, I select all the layers and enable the blur effect. This adds natural blur during camera movement, making the scene appear more realistic. And that's it. Our parallax effect is complete, marking the end of this tutorial series. I hope this video has been both helpful and educational for you. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to hit the like button below. It motivates us and helps our content reach more people. To be the first to catch our next tutorial videos and never miss out on new techniques, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Also, feel free to share your thoughts, suggestions, or any tips you'd like to add in the comment section. Your feedback is extremely valuable to us. It's your input that helps us improve and create even better content. Take care, and I'll see you in the next tutorial series.